Welcome back, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, behind me, I have a 2011 Skoda Fabia estate model. This car belongs to a good friend of mine, her name is Sue. Um, she sent me a message the other day saying that she could no longer get into the boot of the car. So I told her I'd have a look at it and see if I could figure out why she can't get in the boot and also fix it. Now, she also has taken this car to a local garage, um, but the reason that it's here now is because the quote that they gave her to fix it um, was a lot more than what she was willing to pay. Being a garage though, you have to use new parts. They can't put used parts on these cars. Um, and so the price was for a new part from Skoda itself, from the dealership, um, as you can imagine, the price was pretty high for that. So I managed to source the part that I think we need for this um, off eBay, second hand, it's a proper Skoda part. I'll talk you through more of that in a minute. But before I do that, I just wanna show you what I think is wrong with this car and then we'll get to fixing it. Right, so here she is. You would have seen this car on the channel before. This is a 2011 Skoda Fabia TSI. And the problem that Sue is having is that she can't get in the boot. Now, on these cars, you've got a little electronic button. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. This black rubber piece here is, is the button. Um, it's like an electric switch, and when you press it, that activates the uh, release mechanism, which is about here behind this metal. That unlatches and allows the boot to come up, whereas, let me just unlock the car quickly. If I press the button to release the boot, and if you can hear that, there's a whirring noise coming from this area, but it's not opening. Uh, press the button on the key for the boot, does the same thing, you hear that? So there's definitely an issue there. Now, you may think to yourself, how on earth am I gonna get in the boot to change the part if I can't open it? Well, on these cars, I'll just show you. If you go in, if you actually unlock the car, go in the back, and then bring the back seat down. It's gonna be quite hard to show you because uh, there's a little bit of junk in the boot. This right here is the latch that's supposed to open. And next to it, you see this little hole here, this little sort of tiny hole? If you stick a screwdriver in there, there's a manual latch to be able to open this, um, just in case for some reason this happens or you get stuck in the boot or something, you can actually open it from the inside. Um, so I'm gonna grab a screwdriver, open this up, and I'll show you exactly what I think has gone wrong with this thing. <laughs> Got myself a decently long screwdriver, and I'm just gonna push it in there, and then you just sort of pull it to the side, like so. You can see, this is the part that I was pressing on. You see this little metal piece on the side? That's the bit you press to, uh, to open it up, right there. Right, so now that I've got the boot open, you can see this is the part which the latch locks around. It's just like a metal bar. The latch will come down, lock around that, and won't allow you to open the boot. This is the mechanism that I believe is faulty. Um, once I get it out, I can show you it a bit better, but essentially, once you close the boot, this sort of locks like so around there, and that locks in position. Now, now inside this mechanism, behind this plastic trim, uh, this actually has its own small little motor in it. What that does is when you press the button right there, that little motor activates, and that's what unlatches this piece right here. I'll just show you on the new slash second hand one I've got. This is what they look like when they're out. This is the one I'm gonna replace it with. It's a genuine Skoda part, but it is used. Inside this plastic piece right here is uh, the motor. I think it sits right about where this square is right here. Um, and that just activates and unlatches this. So this is the part that we're replacing today. Um, I picked this up off eBay and I paid $34.99 delivered. Uh, which for a genuine Skoda part, I didn't think it was too bad. I don't think it's got any warranty on it, I didn't check, um, but hopefully this will work just fine. Now, three or four days ago, Sue actually brought the car to me so that I could investigate this um, and actually find out what part needs replacing. Uh, and I've had all this off, I had the trim off, and I took the lock out and everything like that, and I just examined it all. And it's actually a pretty easy and pretty quick process. There's not a lot to take off. There's only like four bolts, I think, and then the whole thing is out. One electrical connector, and obviously this trim has got to come off as well, which sort of just pops off once you remove the one screw right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, the trim's gonna come off first. Like I say, it just pops off. These are the tools that you will need. I've gone ahead and laid out the tools that I need. I've got a trim removal tool, just so I don't do any damage to the car because it's not my vehicle. I've got a uh, ratchet with a T45 Torx, which is what you use to take the actual lock off. These right here are T45 screws, as you can see. 
And then I've just got a screwdriver here with a, I think it's a T25 bit, let me just check. Yeah, I've got a T25 bit just here, just to take out the one screw on the trim. So I'm gonna start taking this apart now. There's one screw that lives just in there. Like I said, it's a T25. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and remove that. That's what that one screw looks like. And then I'm gonna use this like, oh God, it's close. I'm gonna use this hooked part of the trim tool to sort of get under the trim right here and sort of lever it down, almost like a crowbar type, type deal. I'm just gonna move my way around as well. So last time I actually removed this trim completely. I took the whole thing out because I thought I had to. Um, but now I know I'm gonna leave it in. I've unclipped it this much, as you can see all the way along. I'm gonna leave it in now though, because I only need to get to this bolt, this bolt, and this one right here. And then that'll allow that to pop out and I can just pull it straight out of here. So I don't actually need to take the rest of them off. That saves me a little job. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo these three bolts, T45s, and that'll just come out. Right, so with those three bolts removed, the whole thing should be able to just come out, like so. And the only thing holding it in now is just this electrical connector, which I'm gonna need two hands for, because I remember this being proper fiddly last time. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands for that. Right, there you go, there's the old one. I'm just gonna compare it to the new one. They pretty much look identical, as you can see. But it's worth just checking that everything's the same, electrical connectors the same. Yep, we look good. Right, just gonna reverse the process, stick the new one in. Right, so before I go crazy and put all this back together without testing it, I think that's what we do. We test it first. I've got it all bolted up, uh, electrical connectors in. I've just pushed the uh, trim just up a little bit just so that it stays. And uh, now's the true test. It's currently open, isn't it? Yep, we're in the open position. Just gonna shut the boot. Like so. All right, gonna use the button first. We'll test that out. Way, there we go. Simple as that. Now we'll just try out the key as well, just to be sure. Yep, you hear that that definitive lock? And let's open that. Nice, I'm well happy with that. Nice, easy, cheap fix. I'll just do it again with the key, so you can see. Have a listen. You hear that nice unlock? that we didn't get before. Ah, Sue's gonna be chuffed for that. Just gonna put a seat back as well. Right. Cool. I didn't say at the start of the video, but another symptom or another thing she had was that the door light was on, just like it is now. You see that? That was on constantly when the doors were open so I'm just gonna shut the drivers and hopefully that'll go out. Yes, there we go. So the door light is gone as well, so that, that was another symptom that the switch had caused was for the door light to stay on. I'm just gonna turn the car on and just double check that it doesn't stay on. 400 miles, think. There we go, so we've got, just got the parking brake and also the seat belt, because I haven't got a seat belt on obviously, but the door one has gone off. Right, well there you have it. You cannot beat a nice, 
cheap and easy fix. That took me all of five minutes to do that. And we have a boot that now opens. So Sue's gonna be well happy with that. I'm glad it was that, that was uh, the problem. Right, so now that I've got the boot job out of the way, that was kind of the main reason for Sue bringing the car here today. Um, because as you can imagine, it's rather annoying not being able to open your boot, so she can now use that. There was a couple of other things she wanted me to look at whilst the car is here. Um, number one is that the cigarette lighter, or the USB was what she uses it for, doesn't work. Now, chances are, it's probably a fuse. Usually when these things don't work, um, it comes down to a fuse. I'm just gonna check the fuse for it and see if that has blown. If it has, I'll go ahead and replace that for her so that she's got a working USB slot again. I believe that they are located under the steering wheel behind this piece of trim right here. Um, I had a look online quickly and I think that they're here on this, uh, from anything from a 2007 to 2014 Skoda Fabia. Um, I believe that they're located down there. So I'm gonna quickly remove that got my trim tool right here. I'm gonna quickly remove that panel. I'm gonna check all the fuses, but I think it's fuse 42 or something like that. So I'll, I'll have a look under there and we'll see if we can find the uh, the right fuse. And if we need to, we'll change it out. All right, so as I said, I think this just pops out. There we go. And that shows us the fuses. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there's a little thing on the back here. That's useful. I'll figure out what fuse it is. So I don't know if you can see this on there. Um, there's a little symbol under 47, which has got a 12 volt symbol and then a, a picture of a cigarette. So it's definitely that one. So fuse 47 would be, if we're looking at it this way. Uh, all right, so this blue 15 fuse right here is the cigarette layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out if I can with these pliers. The fuse actually looks all right to me. Camera focus, there you go. It doesn't look like there's actually anything wrong with that at all. Right, so I'm just double checking the fuse with a multimeter. I've just got it set on ohms at the minute, as you can see, which just checks resistance. Um, resistance, if you don't know what it is, essentially you can check if the metal is connected from one side through to the other. Now, if there's no resistance, it'll stay like that. But if there is resistance, it should go down to zero. If I touch it on there. One on each pin, there you go, you see it goes down pretty much to zero. So this fuse is absolutely fine, there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. So there's a chance that it might actually be something wrong with her little USB thing. So just for peace of mind, just in case there was, for some reason, two fuses that uh, make this thing work, I've gone ahead and just checked every single fuse in this whole box and they are all perfectly fine. So there's nothing wrong with these. So chances are it's probably this that's the issue. So you may need one of these. Now, something else I just want to show you real quick. Um, I've just used my multimeter again while I've got it out, while I was testing the fuses. Makes sense to use this to actually test the socket itself. Then if you can see inside there, but there's a little gold circle at the bottom, um, and then you've got the metal on the sides. Now, I believe, now I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that one of these grounds, which is probably uh, maybe these things on the side, these little metal tabs, and then it gets its power from the bottom, I think. E or that, either that or the other way around, I'm not 100% sure, but, Regardless of that, um, I can test by putting one of my leads, the ground, on one of the, either the gold bit or on the side of this metal sleeve, and then the other one on the other bit, and we should get a reading um, if it's getting voltage to the socket itself. This will obviously show 12 volts on here, so let's just do that, give it a quick test. All right, hopefully you can see this all right. I've just sort of set the camera up. I'm gonna stick my black one on the side of the wall, so that's on the side of the, Thing, and then I'm going to stick the red one on the bottom and my hands in the way, hang on, there you go. As you can see on the multimeter, we have got a reading. Here we've got 12.0, which is 12 volts, which is what we want to see. So there must be a problem with this little thing. So that's good news. You can just buy a new one of them and uh, that'll be job done. I'm just going to pop this back up as well. I was actually gonna do like a, just a quick little health check under the bonnet, just make sure that the screen wash is good, oil is good, coolant is good, um, and just make sure there's nothing that looks untoward under the bonnet as well, just a peace of mind for Sue. All right, so here we are under the engine bay. This is actually the 
turbocharged engine and it's actually quite a nippy little car. I've driven it up and down the road obviously to get it in the driveway and it actually does pick up quite well. This is the tiny little turbo right here, as you can see, tiny little baby snail. Um, I'm under here just checking the coolant and stuff. It's, it's not low, but it's, it's sort of on the minimum mark. So I might just give that a quick little dribble of some coolant. I've got some red or pink coolant in the, uh, in the shed. So I'll probably just top that up a tiny bit. That doesn't look too bad though. Screen wash looks pretty much empty. So I'll give that a top up as well. Um, I was the last person to do a service on this engine. I actually did a video on that. You may remember if you want to watch that, go back on the channel. Oil filter, I did. Let's just check the oil. Looks pretty good, still quite clean to be honest. This probably will have a service soon with me, so I'll probably film that as well. It's like, I don't know what Sue does with this car, but it looks like she's been off-roading. There's so much dust. I just got myself some pink coolant, I'm just gonna top this. Go up just a dribble, that's all it needs. Don't need a lot. Just gonna put it up to the max mark. There we go. Same with the screen wash, just gonna top that up. This is what I use, Halfords. This is the concentrated stuff, so you mix this with water. Stick the rest of that in. It's actually filled up right up there, as I wasn't even that low. But at least that's full as well. I checked the oil, all looks good. And everything else looks all right. No leakages, no oil spills. Everything looks pretty good. Um, the main job for today, like I said, was the boot. That now works. Susie's gonna be over the moon with that. Um, and also I figured out why the cigarette light doesn't work. She just needs a new USB. So that's nice and easy as well. Um, and that's kind of it. That's all the jobs I needed to do today. Nice, quick and easy video. I do like jobs like this every now and again, not pulling engines and subframes out like that Vectra back there. Um, just changing out like a lock or a part is, uh, is nice once in a while. Also, let me know down in the comments if any of you are clued up with like German cars like Skodas, uh, Mercedes, VWs, that sort of thing. Is it common for German cars for their lock mechanisms, whether it's the boot or the doors, to go wrong? Because this is now the third car that I've done a lock on. My next door neighbor has got a, a Mercedes C-Class and one of the rear door lock mechanisms went on that. So I changed that out and that now works. And also my other half's mum's car, which is a Skoda Fabia as well, just a little bit of an older one. That had a driver's door lock that went on that. Um, and I fixed that and now that works. And now this one's been here with the boot lock. So that might be a common thing maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but if it is, let me know down in the comments. Sue, I hope you are happy with the boot. Hopefully you can start using that again now and be able to carry all your stuff around. She does watch the video, so hello Sue, if you're watching, you're welcome. I'm gonna end this video there. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content. I will see you guys in the next one.